What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be explaining what an IP address actually is. In this video, we're going to start with something very simple, what it actually is, and then we're going to dive deeper and deeper up until the point where we're doing ones and zero. We're going to learn a little bit about binary today as well. Let's dive into what an IP address actually is is this video is going to be formatted in a way where i'm going to give you all the information up front i'm not going to make you watch the video up until the end if you just to get the basic information i'm going to get start basic and then condense it and condense it and uh get deeper and deeper and then at any point in the youtube video where you you had enough or you you feel like you're comfortable you can leave so be one of the first youtubers to tell you something like that so nevertheless let's start with the simple stuff what is an ip address uh, an IP address is an internet protocol address. Uh, this is a unique identifier assigned to each device connected to a network that uses the internet protocol to, for communications. Um, so with that said, it's basically an identifier. So let's say I had... Um, so if I had this laptop, right, my little laptop that I practice pen testing on, um, this laptop here, if it was plugged into a network, it's be assigned an IP address, which most of you will be familiar with. Um, that identifies what the device is. So the router, or when you ask for data or you ask for a website, it knows where to send that information on your network. Because you can have five laptops on your network or your cell phone or your smart TV or whatever device. When the request gets sent out, the router knows to send it back to you because you have a special uh, unique identification. So kind of like a cell phone. So you have a certain number that's your number so when somebody calls that number it finds you and you're able to make that phone call just like you make a request on the internet or you make a request on a network uh, it works the same way or like a address on your home when you're trying to get a package it knows exactly where to send the package because it came from a certain address and, it, and you want it sent to you uh, you buy something from amazon it gets sent to your house because it knows your address kind of like an ip address um, that is the bare bones basic. Um, hang on because uh, that's pretty much it for this simple explanation. Now we're start diving into deeper and deeper of what an IP address actually is. All right, so now we're going to be getting into like the level two or what an IP address actually is. So right now you see 192, 168, 1, and 10. So an IP address is divided into segments called octets, each consisting of eight bits. So 192 actually means... One one zero 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 zero, and I'll explain why in a in a little while. But that's one two three four five six seven eight. There's eight. One sixty eight is actually one zero one zero one zero zero zero. I know you're saying, how do you know this? Well, we're gonna explain on how to get that number in a little while. One is actually zero 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 one, and ten is zero 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 one zero one zero. Now you're gonna say, how do you even get to that? Like, what? How is how is this that? Well, let me explain it. All right. So each segment identifies something. So let's start with the first segment. The 192 or the first segment um, is used for network identification. The second is for network or subnet identifications. The third one is usually for uh, particularly, it's actually particularly for subnets within a network. And then the last one here is uh, identifies a specific device or host within your subnets. Each octet, which again is these sets of octets, means something. Each one and where it's positioned has a different meaning. In summary, octets are fundamental units of IP addresses that help structure and manage the addressing system for routing data on networks. So just keep in mind that what you see here is actually this. And now we're gonna get into what does all these ones and zeros actually mean? What is binary? Why, why is it one and zeros? And let's break into that. Ones and zeros is how computers process information. Why does it do that? Computers use a binary system because their internal circuitry operates with two states on and off. These states are represented by ones and zeros. This simplicity makes binary a natural choice for digital systems. How does that work? In binary, every digit and bit and group of bits formulate a byte or an octet. Each byte, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, these eight bytes equal a bit. In the context of IP addressing, each octet is converted from binary to a decimal number. And let's break into how that actually works with visuals here. 
All right, so let's bring it back to what we started with so you understand what's happening here. So we're gonna start with the one, we're gonna start with the 192, right? So let's get this stuff aside for now, okay? So here's our 192, what actually is going on here. And we're gonna see, we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how we actually got this number here, okay? Okay, this is how I have the numbers here. Multiply each binary digit by two raised to the power of its position, starting from zero on the right, and you work your way to the left. Now, if you look here. So if we remember, the 192 actually means this. One, one, zero, 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 zero. Now, earlier I said I want to explain how we got that number. So if you look here, one, one. So we know that in this, this place right here, we have 128 and 64. Right, and then these zero 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 represent nothing, right? None of these are used. So you would take these two and you would add them together and then add all the zeros together because that's what these these are placeholders. And if you were to add these two together, you would get one ninety two. And that's how you get this. This is how this is converted to this. Now let's do that for all of them, right? 168 actually means this. And how do we know this? The one represents 128. This zero represents 64, but we don't, but we're not using it because it's, it's not on, uh, it's not being used. Then this one's being used, so that's 32. So you have to add 28, 32, and then this one right here, and eight. So we go here, again, you're going to add all these together. 128, 32, and 8 to equal 168. And that's how you get this number. Uh, let's keep going. 1 means 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. How do we get that? Well, this placeholder, not, it's not being used, not being used, not being used, not being used. This one's being used. That's why you have a 1 there. And if you did the math, if you added all this together, you get just 1. 10 actually means... What you see here? Zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero. And let's do the math. This is represented here. This is represented here. This is represented here. Represented here. We have a one, so we have to add the eight here. That's one that equals two over there. You can add it here. And then you just add everything together. So we use those ones represent that up there. And we add this together to get 10. And that's how you get this. All right, so now that we did that, so let's go ahead and track all the way back to where we were. Now we understand how we converted this to this, and we also figured out why we use binary in general. Now we're gonna talk about IPv formats. So we have IPv4 and IPv6. IPv4, this format uses a 32-bit addressing scheme, allowing for 4.3 billion unique addresses. IPv6, this format uses a 128-bit addressing scheme, providing a vastly larger number of unique addresses, about 340 unsilid trillion, uh, something crazy, so I, I can't even say the word. There's so many addresses when it comes to IPv6 because of the scheme that you can fill an IP address with every single piece, a grain of sand on the planet. So that's how many addresses, so you would never theoretically, I mean, maybe you would, but I don't think so. You would never run out of IPv6 addresses, where only 4.3 billion IP addresses using this scheme here is very limited, believe it or not, nowadays. Before, back in the day when they made this, they didn't think that this would be as big as it is. I mean, your, your refrigerators, your, I mean, everything, everyone needs an IP address, so we're running out of IP addresses. There's ways to get around it. We've come up with certain things um, to get by, which we'll discuss maybe a little bit later in this video, but... With that said, just understand that IPv6 exists because of that problem. And uh, just know that it's there. But more than likely, you're not going to see it because IPv4 works and it's just the standard. Um, and that's what you're going to see mostly. So we'll just keep that in mind that IPv6 is a thing, but we use IPv4 for basically everything. One other thing to understand is that we have two different types of addresses, IP addresses. You have private versus public addresses. So what's a private address and what's a public address? Right here, you're looking at a private address. This is something that's within your network. Public address 
is something that's outside to the world uh, World Wide Web. So your internet service provider will provide you with your unique IP public address. So let's start with the home IP address. The home IP address usually has 192 or 10 in the beginning. Um, uh, you can use a DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol. Um, it, so it assigns things within your network automatically with IP addresses, or you can use static IP addresses where I want my laptop to be this address all the time and I want to reserve my laptop. That would be my static IP address or I, whatever's available in my home network, just give it this one. If my laptop is off and not connected to the internet, give this to some other device. So that's something to understand that this is just a local IP scheme. So public IP address is assigned to your home router by your internet service provider. It is an address that identifies your entire home network on the internet. So for example, something like 203.1.1 13.45 would be your public IP address. Now, you don't really want that to get out there or people discover your public IP address because they can know exactly where you are. You can use it to locate people and devices and networks. So keep that in mind that later on, we're going to be doing some IP spoofing where, and uh, we're going to be talking about how to hide your IP address and how to become private and um, invisible on the internet. Knowing these fundamentals will help you understand how and why we're doing what we're doing. So get this basis on what our public IP address and what your local private IP address schemes are so you know what's going on there. How do these two work together, right? So network address translation. So NAT, in short, manages the communication between your home IP address and your public IP address. So when this, when these, when your private IP address hits your router, it can, it, your router knows your private address and then your router knows your public address. And your public address is what's used to get outside in the World Wide Web. And that public address, whatever the request gets sent back to that public address to your router and then your router then sends it to your local address and then to the device that's uh, requesting the address. So there's a, there's a couple stages and a couple steps. Like it hops from your local IP address to your public IP address. To wrap up everything in this video, we explained what an IP address is. And to summarize, an IP address is a unique identifier on a network. Uh, we also broke into how we get this, how we get these uh, IP addresses. And we broke down each segment, the octet, as we went over over here, what this actually means. This equals 1100000 and so on. As we went through the video explaining how we got each and every one of these. Um, we also discussed um, your public and your private IP addresses, the difference between the two and how we use NAT to connect your public and your private IP addresses, how to send data, data between the two. We also went over uh, binary, why we use ones and zeros in the first place. If you really enjoy videos like this, please leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Um, I do cybersecurity on this channel as well. i um, using this video as a base for my upcoming um, cybersecurity videos I got coming out. Uh, we're gonna be doing IP spoofing and we're also gonna learn about how to, how to hide your identity online. Um, knowing the fundamentals of what an IP address is and your public and your private is crucial um, to understanding how to do that kind of stuff. And this is a good basis for stuff like that. I also want to do more networking videos on my channel. Um, if you like that, please comment below what else you would like to see uh, me to, what, what we would like me to see a breakdown. I'm really trying hard to make it simple to understand. Um, I'm not trying to like miss things. I'm just trying to like keep it as simple as possible because it's very easy to get overwhelmed and get like really like bogged down by all this stuff. And reality is it's really just super simple and you, you just got to know what you need to know. Um, it's nice to know everything, but you don't really need to know everything. So I just like to show you a broad spectrum, uh, spectrum of all this stuff and then bring it down to home where it's, you feel comfortable. And I hope I do a good job explaining it to you um, in a simple way in simple terms. Um, Again, thank you very much for being here. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. Remember, safety is an illusion, and I'll see you in the next one.